Thank you for listening to Fam Talk 89 FM. We are on air at the Tano International Hotel Nandi, and it's time for a new season of Radio with Pictures on My TV. Thanks to the support of UNDP, SCAFE program supported by the European Union, DFAT, and the International Women's Development Agency. Thank you, Francis. In February 2014, Cabinet adopted the National Gender Policy. So how can we ensure that it's resourced to not only respond to current priority programs of the Department of Women, but also address the cross-cutting issues of participation from local governance to local government to national forums, including Parliament? Coalitions such as the Fiji Women's Forum and the Fiji Young Women's Forum have been forging ahead since 2012 to support women's participation in the democratization processes while also addressing the barriers to political participation, whether it's social perceptions or very lived barriers such as infrastructure. To discuss the interlinkages, here are the women in this new series of Radio with Pictures, films following our Western Division consultation, which involved close to 50 women leaders from Ra to Nanronga, representing more than 3,000 women. Uh, of all diversities, including young women, LGBTIQ, and disability rights groups. We welcome Jasmine Kaur. Jasmine is the founder of Oceania Pride. We have Siteri Saukita, Saukitonga from the Lomo Lomo village, uh, Vunda Songsonga Vakamarama. Pritika Sen is joining us from the United Multiracial Women's Group in Tavua. And we have Georgia Lilo, who is a member of the ELF-6 group this year. ELF-6, of course, is the Emerging Leaders Forum program of the Fiji Women's Rights Movement. And Georgia participates in it from Lautoka. So I'm going to start with you very quickly, uh, Jasmine. What are we seeing as the national development priorities? But how are they also interlinked with this issue of participation, we're hearing we want to have more women in decision making, we want to see more young women in decision making, but what are the barriers and therefore how can a national development plan address these barriers? With the microphone. <laughs> I think the most important thing to always remember is the policy of nothing about us without us. Yes. Basically having young women, uh, lesbian, uh, bisexual women, trans women as well as women with disabilities in the different types of disabilities present at the negotiation tables, uh, present at tables where uh, policies are made, uh, legislations are passed. I think that's one of the most important things that we need to keep into account. So Terry, how could you see more women participating as, as Jasmine has just said, from the village or even within the village level? Do we wait for the Turangani Koro to call or should there be a way in which the women are participating? I think there should be a way in which a woman should participate uh, while waiting for the Turangani Koro to come over. How, how could that happen? What, what, could be the, what would be the changes that could make that happen? Like uh, in my village, we normally do a discussion before we, we finalize our discussion through the Turangani Koro. Mm. Mm. But would you like to be more... How often does that discussion happen? It happens uh, twice a week. Okay, so mm. you're talking to the Turangani Koro twice a week. Yes. Do you go into the, the, the Boseva Koro meeting? Are you participating there? Yes, of course. And how does that work? What, what are you able to achieve by meeting twice a week, by participating in the Boseva Koro? We normally do what uh, being suggested by the Turangani Koro, from mm -hmm. the Turangani Koro. Like we normally do our village uh, health uh, cleaning up mm. in every Tuesday. Mm -mm. And <coughs> do you come up with ideas to share with the Turang Nikoro? Is that an opportunity there as well? Yes. Of so you're able to make suggestions too? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Pritika, Tavua has very few advisory councillors who are women. Yes. Um, if we want to see national development that is gender inclusive, that is responsive. How do we address these barriers or this underrepresentation? What needs to happen? Uh, 
we need more women to be in advisory council yes in uh, such in mostly in committees eh? mm. because uh, women uh, can understand another women's voice and they they can uh, arise their voices to ahead eh? mm. so you saying not just to be appointed as the advisory councilor but participate in all the committees yes why aren't women being selected why do you think that's happening mm, because uh, some of the because uh, women should expose themselves in such a in decision making they should expose themselves go to mm. the in communities in the clubs they should join eh? mm. then they can go ahead to be in such a advisory council eh? so you have a lot of multiracial groups in tapua obviously women are um, highlighting what they're doing they are demonstrating their leadership their qualities um, but yet you're not being selected. Yes. So even when women are, as you say, being exposed to, to learning, to participating, they're still not being selected. Yes. What's the problem again? Uh. To we, who do we need to be lobbying or who do we need to be reminding that you need to have this equality? We should have uh, go and attend the workshops and clubs mm. and we should go and uh, attend and then we can expo the women to be to be in that field eh? we should ex expose ladies to go and in that field okay georgia so if we take the example from pritika that women need to be supported in terms of capacity building as well as young women women of all diversities and they are doing that they're doing these activities some of the leaders are going out to workshops like our divisional consultation what's causing this imbalance in decision making why do you think they're not being selected well as a young woman i feel that they're not being selected because of the cultural barrier it's still a very strong thing especially in fiji because in the Itaoke culture and the Indian culture and even in a mixed race culture, women are still seen as the weaker species and therefore won't make decisions as well as men because mm. we are affected by hormones differently. So they're seeing us as these crazy mental psychos that won't be able to think straight for a few days of the month and we shouldn't be taken into consideration because men don't go through these problems and therefore they'll be of sound mind the complete month. Okay, so if we take that as a rationale for why women aren't being selected, yet we have a national gender policy. Mm -hmm. It's based on a convention called the UN Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. So shouldn't that be the reason to overlook these female realities? It, it still, I don't think, is followed through, especially in rural communities, because mm. it, it's one thing to put a convention into place in the national government, but in the smaller local communities, there isn't a UN representative there to see it followed through. So mm. I think that is what the major issue is, is that it is put in place, but the smaller communities don't acknowledge it because they feel, oh, well, we're a small community, we're still very culturally sensitive so we have to stick to our old ways because we live in this rural community and don't have to listen to the national government. But uh, Pritika, wouldn't you expect a district officer or someone in local government to be making sure that the national gender policy is localized if they've made a commitment to women's rights and gender equality? That's their job, right? They yes. work for government? Yes, they should come in. The district officer should come and visit and it's, uh, especially they should come and speak to the ladies, the women, and talk about them. Eh, and then she's the responsibility to select the ladies to be an, a, a community member in the advisory councillor. So do you think a national development plan should really make sure that when it comes to not just resourcing the Department of Women, but do they need more resources in these other government departments? What do you think, Georgia? I feel that they do need more resources, especially in the rural areas, but um, there is just a lack of, of understanding with the national government and all the little local governments and the divisional governments. So it's, a, it's more of a long-term plan than it is a short-term plan, which is kind of sad. Mm. Because it was ratified at mm. least a decade yeah. ago, right? Yeah. Um, coming back to you, Siteri, um, 
we have these gender equality commitments. Is the information reaching the, the village level, the Boseva Koro, to understand what we mean or what does it mean to be gender inclusive, to have gender inclusive village plans? Is that happening? Yes. Okay, how does that happen? Why is that happening? What's the difference? Like the land management systems mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. being uh, <coughs> planned, and we are starting within the last five months. Uh, the land are given to us women, and we start planting a uh, few vegetables and through the help of the Trangnikor. So he's seeing the need to give women access to land. Yes. And do you think this should, I mean, what made him have this realization? Did he go through some special training or how come he's done this together with the women's group? Uh, he gave his own land to the women and he told us to divide in each group. So we started uh, doing the planting of uh, different uh, vegetables and crops. Excellent. That's a really good model in terms of within the, the traditional structures that women's needs are being responded to. Coming back to you, Jasmine, I mean, we're talking about all of these commitments. And as Georgia said, she's, she doesn't want it to take another 20 years, right, <laughs> for the commitments to be realized. What are some of the strategies in terms of, for example, the Young Women's Forum that's been identified to, to take gender equality forward, particularly looking at national development? Um, so basically, uh, with the uh, Young Women's Forum, what we are really trying to do is uh, get uh, young leaders from communities all over Fiji, including the rural sectors as well as the northern, and uh, really getting to uh, give them the skills that they need in terms of leadership, in terms of attending the various workshops, as well as... Uh, uh, conferences where they are able to not only gain knowledge to be a more active and uh, accountable citizen but also to be able to have the kind of confidence that they need to be able to address these issues and hold the uh, government and the authorities accountable in terms of ensuring a gender policy where all likes of women are uh, represented as well as um, being part of the decision making. So like with the Fiji Women's Forum, we're not just looking at, you're not just looking at national parliament, you're also looking at local government and local governance. Yes, um, very recently the Fiji Young Women's Forum met and had an activity around where more than 65 young women met and uh, really understood how the parliamentary process is, has, is working and what we can do as a young active citizens. And we've also been uh, looking into the Local Government Act and we are really hope we're there. we have already identified young women who are ready to take the local government. To contest the elections, yes. not take it over. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of local government, I'm going to come to come back to you, Pritika, because we were having a, a separate conversation. You've completed your seventh form. Yes. yes. Uh, so you finished high school, you got married, you're managing an income generating program, Program. you're a club leader. In terms of all of these experiences, what would you like to see um, the, the priority um, in terms of the National Development Plan? What would you like to see happen in the next five years? Uh, I want to see that uh, government should uh, help the funding uh, project to bring in the water because water is the main basic need for us. Eh? And we are facing water problem in our community mm. and also in the Tawa area, some of the areas they are finding water problems. And I'm requesting that, that the government should have got us some funding for the project for the water. So fund. infrastructure seems to be coming up time and time again. Could you maybe tell us, uh, Pratika, what happens to you? What, what happens when you don't have water? What's your life like without a regular supply of water? Uh, because water is a basic need for us and when uh, sometimes we don't have water at homes and it's very hard for us to do the housework uh, when we, we have without the water and it's very hard for and it also affects our health too because if we don't have water then we got health problem. Thank you. Georgia, five year plan, what would you like to see changed in the or addressed in the national development plan? 
Well, personally, I feel I can't speak on behalf of the rural women, but um, through this week's consultation, I've seen and I've I've seen how luxurious um, people's lives in the more developed parts of the country are. And I can't speak for the rural women as a person, but I, I do empathize with them and I'd like to see more development in the rural parts of Fiji because they could help with our economic development as a country. So I'd like to see more of that. So invest in rural development, yeah. we could see, when you talk about economic development, you're mm -hmm. talking agriculture? Agriculture, tourism, because there are many parts of Fiji that are very beautiful and could be used and developed as tourist mm -hmm. destinations, but are just kind of cast aside because of, it's too much, it's a waste of time because of the community. They don't well, there want no to, roads yeah, there are no roads, mm -hmm. mainly because of the roads and water, it's just too expensive. So they think, oh, we'll just leave that because but they could be using it to develop our country. So is this an example of what happens when young women are asked their opinion? You start thinking outside your comfort zones yes, as well? Yes, yes. Um, this consultation has really helped with that because I've talked to women who live in rural areas and I didn't actually have any experience with it. So I don't feel I'm a perfect representation of these women, but I feel like they should be heard. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Georgia. Um, Siteri. So you've started your farming project with the help of your Turanganikoro. What would you like to see developed further, um, not just for your community, but the Western Division within the next five years? Oh, thank you. Uh, what I would like to need in the next five years is that I would like uh, the Department of Agriculture to support us in various ways so that in the next five years, we will be able to come up or what our needs to be met in the next five years from the government. And okay, so explain to me, what do you mean by support your needs? What do women in agriculture need right now? A micro farming mm -hmm. of a rural commitment and to include women in substantial roles. Okay. How, how could that work? What, what would the Department of Agriculture need to do? Do they need to come and meet with you regularly? Do they need to have funding available for women who are involved in the agricultural sector? What does that look like? Yes, uh, it should be accountable to women mm -hmm. so that the land management system will come to accountable to the women for what is needed in our village area. So one is about the access to land, but yes. also supporting you in the agricultural sector as well. Yes. What are you growing, by the way? We're planting cabbage, tomatoes, and all of kinds of uh, vegetables. And what do you do? Do you go and sell that at the market, or are you selling it in the community? We just sell it in the community. So how much are you earning as, um, as, as a farmer now compared to before? We, uh, we're earning about 70 to $80 a week. Mm -hmm. mm. And is that, uh, okay, is that, what you, is that what you cost as what you'd like to earn? We've been talking a lot in radio with pictures about what women should be paid for the work that we, you do in the rural economy. Is that what you feel you deserve to be earning every week or should you be earning a bit more? I think uh, we should be earning a bit more. Such as? Such as uh, 150 to 200 a week. Okay. All right. So you need to be selling or producing it at another level, right? Yes. To be able to be earning that. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, Siteri. Jasmine, five-year plan. I'm sure you have a lot of ideas. Which sector would you like to tackle? I think uh, uh, health is one of my biggest concerns in terms of uh, uh, development because uh, you cannot really talk about development when you have a, a bulge of youth and women who are not eating healthy or not feeling 
feeling well. So um, uh, health would be definitely be one of my biggest area of concern. And another would be really in terms of LGBT, um, our, uh, our con constitution really gives us a non-discrimination clause on the basis of our sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. But now what I would really like to see is more awareness programs in terms of um, raising more awareness in, at the community level, at the village level, on how it is like to be a person uh, who's has a diverse sexual orientation and uh, what are our, our specific needs. Mm. Coming back to health, mm -hmm. if I could put the LGBT issue in line with your health priority, mm -hmm. what would that look like in terms of a national <coughs> budget? Um, uh, the first one would be definitely a uh, nationwide uh, gender sensitization training that uh, so that when we access healthcare there's zero discrimination faced by our community and uh, I also feel that there needs to be a good investment in terms of uh, specialized LGBT counseling throughout the country where uh, we go and see counselors who actually know about our needs and that they do not assume our realities. Okay, so looking a little bit further, a 20-year plan by tw 2035. Pritika, what would you like to see happen, not just in Tabua but in Fiji? What is the Fiji you envisage? I have to see a great improvement of infra in infrastructure in the Western Division and especially in terms of water supply. Water supply. Yeah. Okay. Because we are facing more difficulties in water supply in Tabu areas and also in Batukola areas. Mm. And we are suffering more water. It's been very long. Drought. Yeah, yeah it's since uh, uh, six years, because I'm married there, and it's six years we are suf suffering for that problem. Mm. And do you have regular piped water? or No, is this we, ha we depend on boreholes. Mm. So what's happened to the borehole water after six years? Is it uh, is uh, it a clean it's a, it's a committee project, mm. and uh, due to the landslide, we find difficulties because now it's very drought season, and we find more difficulties to receive the water. Sometimes we don't have water at home to drink. Mm. Just we receive one drum of water once a week. That drum is how many liters? Uh, 50, 50 litres, the 50, big... 50, yeah. 1550. 50. Five zero. Five zero. Yeah. And that's all you have yeah. to manage? we have to manage one week, okay. that uh, one drum. Eh? If no raining, if sometimes no raining, because now it's drought season, and we find so difficulties to use that much of water. Thank you. Um, Georgia, 2035, in 20, in, yeah, by 2035, 20 years' time, What's the Fiji you, you'd like to see? I'd like to see a more economically stable Fiji because a lot of, a lot of young people find difficulties getting jobs because um, tertiary education is so expensive. And I have friends who have gone through high school and their parents cannot afford tertiary education, so they have to go on a loan scheme. And then getting a job after that is just, it's, it's hellish. So I'd like to see a more economically stable Fiji that has jobs for everyone or at least has opportunities for kids or young people to earn back what they owe to the schools that they've gone to to get these degrees yeah so have an education system that's affordable that's affordable all the way, yeah and, all in the way. and inclusive yes because I realize they they do have scholarship schemes but they're not available to mixed race young women or even young women a lot of them are very inclusive of, of the males. Mm and um, inclusive of more, uh, sorry, what is the word I'm looking for? The more um, highly, highly, highly... Um, Qualified? No, I'm sorry. The the Itauke, the mm. chief's lineage, okay. yeah, they're more inclusive of those sons of the chief's lin of chiefly mm -hmm. lineage and not really of the daughters. Okay. So you see all the Ratus with scholarships, but not the Andes, which okay. is which is a little bit disappointing. So I'd like to see a more gender inclusive and race inclusive scholarship scheme from the government and from... And should we be looking in 20 years? Do you think um, the scholarships or the priorities should be geared towards... We're hearing more about the need to invest in agriculture, the agricultural economy. Should we be actually providing more incentives for young people to be studying in the agricultural sector? Agriculture and I think also medicine, because as Jasmine said, health is a big issue. And a lot of people who do do medicine in Fiji 
move on to go overseas and we have a lack of doctors yes, we're in Fiji. Getting so a lot of we're, we're re- losing, so a yeah. focus on, on medicine and I think on agriculture as well. Okay. Um, very quickly, coming back to you, Siteri, what's your 20-year vision for Fiji and your community? Thank you. In my 20 years... Uh, uh, In your 20-year plan? Plan. What I would like the government to do is that uh, to improve market facilities and reassess uh, use of Philip. Uh, fee policies following consultation with women market vendors and local government should uh, work with rural women leaders to improve uh, women uh, access to their produce to local markets such as hotels restaurants and other business as an economic empowerment strategy okay so let's connect women like you already producing agricultural produce with the hotels, with the tourism sector as well. Finally, Jasmine, 20 years on, but maybe if you could give it to me in terms of a human security lens, what would a 20-year development plan mean in terms of connecting or ensuring human security? Um, think, uh, I think, Sharon, the most important thing is uh, for anyone to be able to feel safe in their own homes, in their own communities, in their own villages. And uh, when you talk about safety, uh, one a person should not be harassed because of their gender or their sexual orientation. A lesbian woman should not uh, feel scared to walk down the street at night because someone will come and uh, harass them for for their sexual orientation, or a woman shouldn't be uh, cautious of what she, how she dresses at night because she, it, she she'll feel like she'll be raped because of her dressing. And also in terms of uh, uh, a 20-year plan, I really feel that there needs to be a sustainable economy where. Uh, our youth stay in Fiji, our businesses, our money, our products stay in Fiji, our exports earn us a big dollar and that our economy is not open to foreign investors where they come in, they make money and they take money away. And also uh, 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 enabling environment, especially for the young women and the youths, where they do not do not feel that their age is a barrier. They should feel that, yes, I am young, I'm energetic and I'm here to stay and make uh, better Fiji where uh, all of us can e- coexist how many and especially my mo- most important priority would be uh, in uh, 20 years time when we have conversations around gender i do not want to uh, hear that uh, people refer to gender as a male and a female but they also take into account the sexual orientation gender identity and gender expression language in it as well so national development planning needs to be focused but really broadly far more inclusive yes okay Thank you so much, Jasmine, Siteri, Pritika, and Georgia. Ensuring that women who make up half our population is critical to ensure that development is being planned and that those plans are fed into the national budget and that they respond to the communities as a whole and that we start to think about a sustainable economic future that everyone can enjoy. And that with that, um, we'll wrap up Radio With Pictures, our sixth episode in this, our new series, It's back to you, Francis. Thank you, Sharon. And we'll be back at the same time next week for another episode of Radio with Pictures. And don't forget to tune in to Fam Talk 89 FM Suva if you are living in the Nausari and Navua corridor of Fam Talk 89 FM Lambasa on air from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Wednesdays in Lambasa Town.